Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Weather in five, five days and five minutes. Brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware at 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, New York. It's southwest Suffolk County on Long Island. Serving the entire New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, tri-state area with everything you need to make sure your home looks good, works well, and is protected in case we get any kind of adverse weather, be it a tropical storm or hurricane or severe weather or come winter time, snow and ice. And uh, they are Long Island's largest supplier of rock salt when the time comes. Meanwhile, they've got everything else you need. 631-756-1125 for the best prices in town. OmniTrueValue.com is the website. Finishing up a beautiful day in the Northeast. Uh, temperatures uh, back up into the upper 60s and low 70s for highs. On the upper right, you could see Hurricane Fiona, which is a record-breaking hurricane, apparently. And when they final, finally uh, verify the pressures that were recorded, at least as measured by pressure, uh, the, the strongest storm uh, tropical system ever to move uh, into and impact the, uh, uh, the provinces uh, the Canadian Maritime Provinces in Atlantic Canada. And down on the lower right, you can see about half of Tropical Storm Ian, which is still days away from any kind of landfall in the United States. And to the west, we've got a cold front that is moving eastward uh, with uh, not a whole lot going on on the radar at the moment. We'll give it a quick refresh, and you can see this arc of showers back over the, great, the northern Great Lakes and swinging up. Uh, into uh, Ontario province in Canada. Meanwhile, the radars from Maine uh, down into Virginia are quiet. There are a couple of light scattered showers in parts of West Virginia and some scattered showers moving across North Carolina from a runaway upper air disturbance that's moving east. And then we've got some uh, more light showers uh, that are falling in parts of Minnesota, Iowa, down into Missouri and into Oklahoma and Arkansas. Uh, much of what you're seeing uh, in the middle Mississippi Valley isn't even reaching the ground because of the dry air that's around. Uh, this week coming up with this cold front, this will be the uh, first rainmaker. Uh, I'm not sure yet what's going to be going on with the tropical system in the longer term, but uh, if we uh, look at the first front, this is rainfall through the day uh, daytime tomorrow. Uh, so it's at the folks at WPC anticipating a tenth to maybe a few areas getting a quarter of an inch in parts of southern New England down into northern Virginia. Uh, the coastal areas may wind up getting a little, little less. I think for the most part, if you're close to the coast, you probably see rain hold off until after lunchtime and that the morning should start out fine. It'll come in a little sooner, though, say in western New Jersey and Pennsylvania and parts of uh, New York State. And then you add the stuff from overnight. So could be anywhere from a quarter of an inch to maybe as much as a half an inch. And the Storm Prediction Center, by the way, has a marginal risk of severe weather from southeastern and southern New England, south and west uh, into the central Appalachians from western, western Virginia, West Virginia, Western Virginia, into northeastern Tennessee and northwestern North Carolina. So covering a very large area. And there's also an area of 2% tornado risk from southeast Ohio, northeastern West Virginia, eastward across Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, Long Island, uh, and into uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and southeastern uh, Mass, and also including uh, the Hudson Valley up to about the Catskills. Marginal risk, in my mind, means that you get uh, an area of showers and some thunderstorms, and there may be an isolated cell or two in the mix uh, that uh, that develops. That's that's how I would approach the idea of a marginal risk. So looking ahead to this week, we have a uh, few things going on. We have another strong upper trough uh, coming into the eastern part of the United States. So this cold front's going to come through on s uh, Sunday night. Uh, it's the first in a series of weather fronts and upper troughs that we're going to have to deal with. So you can see how the GFS displays the radar for tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. Scattered showers inland, and, and it looks like some kind of line moves through in the late afternoon and evening. With temperatures tomorrow in the 70s to around 80 and the dew points coming up, uh, it's, uh, it's ripe for some severe weather and the strength of the upper trough as well. Then that goes out. And then there's going to be a series of upper troughs coming through, producing some showers in upstate New York and in central New England on Monday. So I think it's going to be one of those days with uh, a mix of sudden clouds and a bit of a breeze uh, t on, on Monday. Temperatures will be uh, a bit lower. 
uh, probably uh, in the upper 60s and low 70s for highs. And I think we're going to see temperatures trend down as each one of these upper troughs uh, come through. Uh, Tuesday, another one goes by. So it'll be another day with a mix of sun and clouds, maybe a shower well inland and north. And then the coolest air comes in Tuesday night and Wednesday. Wednesday, I think we're going to have a tough time uh, with temperatures. Uh, we may only be uh, upper 50s to perhaps uh, 60 to 65 at best. And the nights are going to be quite cool with temperatures down in the 40s in many areas. And maybe even a couple of 30s popping up with this big high building across the Great Lakes. For the rest of the week, it looks fine for Thursday and it looks fine for Friday. But the end of the week and next weekend is going to depend ultimately on what uh, Tropical Storm Ian does. And we have models kind of all over the place with this today. Uh, the uh, hurricane tracking models. Well, this is the GFS ensembles. Uh, so all those lines you see, those squiggles, are all the different members of the ensemble. The black line is if you average it all together. And you can see where the average track takes it to the western part of the Florida panhandle. And this, by the way, is west of where the hurricane tracking models have it. They have it a little bit further to the east. But even these models have shifted northward away from southwest Florida, where the southernmost track is just north of Tampa. And the westernmost track is right on the Florida border with Alabama. And uh, as far as strength is concerned, uh, this is going to become probably another major hurricane. And many of the intensity models have this as a Category 4 hurricane as soon as Monday. So if that's the case, we're going to see some rapid strengthening of this going on uh, during the day uh, tomorrow. But there's still a lot of uncertainty with regards to when it comes inland, whether some of that moisture eventually finds its way up the East Coast. Or does it stay to the west? Or does it even get suppressed and taken out to our south? Uh, th those are, I think, some of the questions. And uh, I just want to throw this out there, and I'm not 100% sure of this, but the GFS is a very strong Category 4 hurricane when it gets into the southeastern Gulf. I want you to notice here, uh, this is for Wednesday morning. Uh, these are the dew points across the southeast and across the Gulf states. This is extremely dry air that is coming down uh, in, very far to the south. Even into North Florida, we're looking at dew points that are going to be in the 40s and even the 30s. And that hurricane is headed in toward that air. So the further west it goes, uh, the better chance it has that when it's approaching land, it's going to start to entrain some of that dry air. So even though we would have... A stare, the uh, coastline might be staring at a, f a formidable hurricane. If it goes up the, toward the uh, uh, Gulf Coast, the Florida Panhandle and points west, then that dry air could actually wind up weakening it somewhat before it makes landfall. So that's a, that's a, that's a positive. Uh, the other side of that equation is that if it goes to the northwest, I'm uh, sorry, to the northeast, which is something that the European did today and has been doing. The European is among the models that's further st e further east, uh, taking it in near Tampa. Uh, the dry air doesn't make it that far south. And in that case, if it's something along the Florida west coast, particularly the central uh, Florida coast and points south, uh, it is uh, likely that you could see a major hurricane making landfall. I don't think any possibility is off the table. And as far as the longer term, as we said, um, it's hard to say uh, what exactly we will be dealing with here in the northeast and mid-Atlantic states if we're dealing with anything at all. So it's one of those stay tuned, folks, and we'll see where it goes. Weather in 5 brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware at 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, New York. 631-756-1125 is the telephone number. And the website is omnitruevalue.com. And this is what uh, Tropical Storm Ian looks like on the satellite. It's been slowly becoming better organized. The shear continues to diminish. 
and, and I think once it gets a little bit further west or northwest, we're going to start to see this thing strengthen. In fact, I'm starting to see signs. You see the feathering that's going on around the periphery of the storm, and that's the strong outflow being established, and a lot of thunderstorms and a lot of lightning strikes popping up as well. Also, it looks like the center's getting even more tucked in underneath the main convection. So these are all signs that the storm is starting to put itself together. So we're going to be uh, following it. Uh, uh, tomorrow and of course next week normally we have a Joe and Joe weather show on Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern time but it's a travel day for me depending on whether I get to my destination in time maybe we'll have the Joe and Joe weather show tomorrow night at seven at uh, 7 30 or 8 o'clock Eastern time otherwise we're going to have to wait until Monday see you later